So tell us about Ragtop Industries and how this got started and um, everything else that we need to know. Because there's yeah. a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of, I grew up, you know, working with my father. Um, you know, he was a craftsman, and uh, you know, he's it is a, a working shop. It is a working, a working shop. shop. The guys are working on the back Absolutely. there. You know, crack the whip. I you gotta, get, gotta get helmets out. I get it. Um, you know, my father's a craftsman. He's a he's an antique furniture finisher. Was at one point. Um, so my greatest memories with my father are the Saturdays and Sundays because he worked nights. I would spend in the shop with him. You know, and I, all my brothers, you know, we were there. We, we the whole garage was converted into a shop, and you know, we just spent time with him. It was the greatest memories of my father, um, growing up as a kid. So I always kind of had that natural ability to kind of fix things, you know, that he kind of instilled in me. So um, 2008, I was back from the military, and I was you know back in the volunteer firehouse, um, and. I would just fix the helmets, you know, if something broke, I would just fix it, you know, replace a part, simple, you know, rob parts from another helmet, you know, to fix another one. And um, I did that for a while, and then I got a call one day from uh, Chief Gould at the time, Captain Gould, and he's like, he's like, hey, Pete, I got this leather. You think you can fix it? And I was like, yeah, no problem. Sure. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> no clue. Um, so I said, yeah, no problem. I'll take care of it. So I started researching online and uh, built a little workbench down in the basement and uh, the part, the house we were renting at the time and um, just started repairing it. The wire was out on the back and at the time the chief was going around taking helmets out of service with that wire showing, things like that. So you needed to fix. So researched online. There's a little bit of information out at the time and, uh, you know, figured out, all right, I can fix it this way. Fix it up. Bought some cheap one-shot paint. Boom, 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 done, here you go. Great, you know, awesome. And uh, next thing you know, my phone rings. I was like, hey, uh, Pete, Mike Blashley, New Haven Fire. I heard you fix fire helmets. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like uh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. And, uh, you know, he drops it off, same thing. Wire, you know, did a repair, boom. Next thing you know, phone rings. Hey, Pete, Jim Kelly, New Haven Fire. Uh, I heard you fix fire helmets. And I'm like, I guess so. Yeah, that's what you're telling me. That's and uh, he goes, "All right, I got this helmet." So, and he comes. He he actually comes later in the story too, as well. Um, so, next thing I know, hey Pete, uh, Kyle from uh, Hartford Fire, you fix fire helmets? Ah, uh, yeah. He's best friends with right. Chief Gould, right. and uh, so next thing you know, word of mouth. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, yeah. I got five ten lids in the basement. I'm like, I'm paint, brush painting them at one shot, you know, doing the whole nine, like not even close to what we do now, but that's how it was done back then. Sure. And um, so I finally get Jimmy Kelly's helmet and you know, I do it. He calls me up when he gets it back and he goes, Pete, he goes, how are you painting these helmets? So I brush, you know, one shot paint, I brush it, you know, he goes, yeah, can I come show you how to paint? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, That's okay, awesome. yeah, you know. Right. So, after a couple appointments, you know, of, of trying to trying to hook up, we finally hooked up. And he goes, I'm gonna come over tomorrow. I'm gonna teach you how to paint HVLP. I said, okay. I had no idea what HVLP meant at the time. I'm like, I have no idea. I'm like, what do I need to do? Do I need like gas mask? Do I need like you know, a N95? What do I need? He goes, no, you just need to be there. Just relax. Uh, so he actually came over. I had only met this guy three or four times. Right. And. He came over, spent an entire afternoon, brought all my equipment, HVLP gun, compressor. You know, he brought the whole setup. Set up in my basement, cracked open a window, and we start showing me how to HVLP paint fire helmets. And uh, turns out he painted furniture for 30 years. No kidding. So uh, he was like, my mind was blown. Yeah, I bet. So my saint of a wife, um, let me build a paint booth out of wood in my basement. And I took a little window fan, you know, the window yeah, fans you use right. in your summer, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. stuck that in there. That's had the whole thing fantastic. blocked off, lit two by fours and one eighth plywood. And I built this little Fugazi paint booth, you know, and, uh, it's awesome. Jimmy <laughs> left, he left all of his equipment there really? and he goes, when you make enough money to come buy your own stuff. He goes, call me, I'll come back and pick it up, but I'll leave cool. it with you for now. Awesome. Taught me so how to you clean still the have guns. Stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I did I did have it for a little while. Um, I did have it for a little while, but I mean, you know, talk about impact. I mean, sure, I, it was that was huge. You know, I mean, yeah. that really put you into set the next me level. apart. It, it really put yeah. me. I'm like, okay, so there's there is more to it than just brush painting helmets and and um, so. I started building. I started word of mouth, just phone calls. Next, you know, Hamden, the department I grew up on, was, you know, they're calling me. New Haven guys are calling me. Uh, Bridgeport guys are calling me. Now I'm starting to get, and then all of a sudden, New York City guys start calling me. I'm like, geez, I'm like, this is like a thing. It's fantastic. So, after, I think in 2011, I was sitting in uh, Coronado Beach, San Diego, California. I was taking my hazmat technician class through the military. It's just there. That's and, long, uh, yeah, a fantastic place. My... The Air Force, you know, everybody always knocks mm -hmm. the Air Force, but, you know, I was there for two weeks and I had a hotel on the beach. Yeah. And so uh, it was fantastic. Coronado is beautiful. I'm so sorry. I was, uh, so I was uh, sitting in my hotel room, you know, at night and I was talking to my wife and I'm like, oh, I think this could be a thing. You know, I really think this could be something, you know, and uh, she goes, well, what are you going to do? I said, I think I'm going to build a website. And so I got on, you know, GoDaddy web builder, whatever, right. and Callan and Sons refinishing named after my father. And I built this website, and it was, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, finally I got tired of explaining to people that I don't have any kids, that it's my father, and it's... <laughs> name didn't really work. Yeah, right. I'm working on the sun's thing, Yeah, but, you know, yeah. Like it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> it turned into a big explanation, so yeah. I ended up changing it to, uh, to, to Ragtop, which um, that name comes from... I was trying to think of names, and one of the guys I worked with, I was at the... Uh, Connecticut Air National Guard Fire Department, full time as a civilian, um, and I was sitting in the sitting in the firehouse one night. A guy by the name of Howie Coro, um, who builds hot rods. He's a fireman who builds hot rods. See, right. That's where um, I figured it came from. And uh, and we we're talking names, and I'm like, oh, I want to call it this. I want to call it that. And where he's like, How about ragtop? Like the old other ragtops. And I said, That's what I can do. That. That's what Tommy was talking about. I can do that. Could be a bunch of MGs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know. I could do that. And uh, I said that works. So, so I ended up just. Yeah. Um, ended up just coming up with the name Ragtop, and uh, it stuck. Yeah, it's good. Changed the website over and became Ragtop, and then um, went public with it. There was a forum at the time everybody was on, CT Fire, Dash EMS, um, where I posted, oh, you know, I fix fire helmets now, leathers and everything, and all that stuff. And I came up with their cars. That, that I love what they, you know, they are the leather helmet, but they yeah. had a very poor ratchet design, the way it clips Shit. into the helmet. So I actually manufactured my, started manufacturing my own clips. And um, so I put that up there and I got contacted by a guy by the name of Ashley Shapiro. Uh, and he owns Capital City Fire Helmets. Um, and so ironically, he had started, he had started a little bit before me, um, but we kind of both went public around the same time. Right. He was before me going public. He was before me, you know, um, in the leather helmet restoration business. And um, he goes, ah, you know, I, I like what you've done with your ratchet repair. You know, we kind of, kind of feel each other out of where the businesses were going, and yeah. you know all that stuff. And we kind of came up with this agreement of, you know, let's not be competitors, let's be friends. You yeah, know, let's good. be, let's be, you know, quote unquote business partners. Essentially, um, he was more. He's a, she's a traditionalist. He manufactures helmets and does, you know, his restorations and everything. He doesn't he doesn't do them anymore. But when he did, they were all done to the old pre-MSA spec, and it was about honoring the tradition of where the leather fire helmet came from and you know hitting back on that right where i would kind of do like ah oh, you know i'll do this i'll do that you know i'll kind of more like what the customer wants i do it mm -hmm. um so we kind of came up with an agreement and i was like okay i'll stay away from the retro brass because he's the retro brass king hands down um you know and i came up with uh, our flat black which we've been doing for about eight years now yeah. um and we developed this um, this flat black is not like a matte black or anything like that. It is like a fighter jet flat black, and that's the look right. we were going for. Um, he goes, I'll stay away from your flat black. You know, you stay away from Metro Bath. We kind of just came up with an agreement of sure. how, we could, how we could both be in the market together right. and support each other mm -hmm. versus, um, you know. Cutthroat. Yeah, exactly. So I referred all my re Retro Brass orders to him. I would take helmets in, send them up to him for Retro Brass. He sent them back. Um, we got together in more than a few occasions and we would test out paint, you know, combinations and we would test out primers and we would test out, you know, trying to see what the absolute best combination was. And I literally, we would paint helmets and we would kick them down the street, drop them out of houses, drop them out of buildings, 
kick them down the street. Yeah. I throw them in ovens. Right. I'd give them to the New Haven guys, let them wear them in burn building and say, you know, roast this helmet. Yeah. I want to see how the paint holds up. Um, and we kind of just developed a lot of, you know, the industry, if you will, um, yeah. together, you know, together. And uh, that's when social media advertising and all that was just starting to get big and mm. we hopped on the social media train and, you know, rode it to where we are now, you know. So, um, and he's, he, he, we've watched each other have children, you mm -hmm. know, we've watched each other, you know, buy and sell houses and move and all this other stuff. And, it, you know, he's really, really come to be, you know, one, one of a very good friend of mine. He, you know, he watched me get out of New Haven, you know. And uh, when I went from the airport to, to the city. So. Is he older? No, he's actually a little bit younger to me. Oh, okay. Um, okay. He's actually a little bit younger to me, but he's... I'm picturing the whole time you're telling a story that yeah. it's an older guy because nope. yeah. he's more traditional. Nope. And, but you know, he's, he on. was raised old school. Gotcha. Um, his father is a uh, retired deputy chief from the city of Hartford. Old school guy. Um, Ashley's on the city of Hartford. He's gotcha. a TAC 1 driver, which is a pretty pretty solid spot in the, yeah. in, in, right. the, in the city organization. Um, and he's just, he's an old school fireman, you know, nice. he's an old school fireman stuck on a young guy's body, you know? Yeah. Um, so. Not a bad thing? No, not at all. Not at all. And, uh. Eat more of that. Yep. And him and his father, they both, you know, had a love for the helmets and, you know, actually started researching them. We came up with the Ben 2 Retros. I don't know if you've ever seen those, but we do. I don't, I don't have any shop right now to show you, but, um, we take the Carnes Retro Brass, we put it on a Ben 2, and we paint the Ben 2's flat black. Okay. Then we adjust the suspension so it's a much more comfortable helmet to wear. Um, nice. Yeah, wow. and then so we kind of came up with that whole thing together. Um, we would get together, we would just screw around, like nothing you know that we would offer to the public. But we took a we took an 880, that that white 880. I used to teach in that helmet. Yeah, and we took the leather brass ring and you know liner system and installed it into the 880, and it's just a million times more comfortable. Oh, to wear. I can imagine. You know, it's 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 wow. awesome. Yeah. Plastic. You know? Uh, yeah, they were yeah, they're terrible. They always break. Yep, terrible. So we, we retrofitted that, and yeah. you know, um, put retro brass on. We would just we would just get together, and we would just just talk shop, and uh, you know, and work, and just see if we could make things better. You know? Yeah. So. Oh, I think that's um, cool. I mean, this is it's one of those things. Like I don't know enough about helmets. Like I yep, just take for yep. granted. I throw my New Yorker on, off I go. My one after twenty years, I had to retire it finally, and I'm now I'm wearing another one, yep, and I yep. hate it doesn't yep. fit like my original never will you know and so i'm gonna send it up here and have you guys figure it out for me because i can't it just doesn't fit right yeah and yeah steam yep. their head. They might. And, that's, I mean, and i'll tell you what hands down when it comes to sizing helmets to heads ashley is hands down the best guy to, to do that i mean right? yeah. you give him inches on a measuring tape and he'll he'll size a helmet and it'll wow. fit you just put it on you're like he did mine he did mine when i got hired in the city um yeah. and he sized it and it just fits. Because yeah, they're all different. Fits like a baseball they come hat. Out of the box. It's like yep. buying the leather boots. They, you, you know, Carnes is, or MSA, I should say, has has really streamlined everything. Yeah. When you start talking, like, you know, when M when Carnes owned the company, I mean, you'd have studs mounted in two different positions. Right. You know, they wouldn't but line that was up the right. Great I mean, that was in shop. Yeah, yeah you know, it, it was in New Jersey. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Hand built. I mean, they were handmade. Yeah, you know, right. and every single helmet was different. Yeah. Now they're getting a little more. Uh, assembly line you still you still can find you know some differences in the way that the dome is placed on top of the rim and everything like that Are they're in North Carolina now North Carolina yeah Jacksonville North Carolina so what do you um, see I mean leather helmets are they prevalent still I mean are cities I think you're gonna I think you're seeing a resurgence I mean I so um, at the shows okay yeah, yeah you're, seeing a, you're seeing it you're seeing a resurgence you I think I think what you're seeing is you're seeing a resurgence of you know vintage you know guys are you know into the old leather helmets they're into you know fdny buff videos they're into the history and traditions you're kind of s seeing that become more prevalent you know right. on social media on you know in the firehouse yeah. um and even the phoenix helmet i mean it looks more old style than and you could do a lot with the phoenix you just have to remove that god awful eagle? rising phoenix Is that, yeah that's the yes. one with yeah. the big eagle two yeah, issues two issues with the phoenix because you have you, as a business owner you have to look at okay how do I stay in business? Because I have two guys, more than two guys, I have four guys who literally, not including including myself, that's five, that I depend on this shop for a paycheck. Right. Supplemented pensions, right. supplemented payroll. Sure. And I think, I, and for me, I think that's probably one of the things that maybe the public doesn't understand is that this is a functioning shop that puts food on the table for people's families. Yeah, it's not a hobby. You it's know, a business, and, and right. 
and listen, you know, I get accused, and, and, and it's probably one of the, once every few months, I get accused of not being a brother because I don't tell people how to paint fire helmets. And I'm, I'm not doing it to be an asshole. No. I, I have a business built off of it right. that puts food on people's tables. Correct. Yeah. It pays for my son's daycare. Absolutely. You know, I, I and I tell you what, I haven't taken a paycheck from the shop in three years. Yeah. When we expanded into the shop out of my, out of my basement, I, I have not touched a dollar of the money. I've put it back into the back mm-hmm. into the shop, and I put it in their paychecks before I pay myself. Yep. And you know, it's it's so one of those crazy things. Being a brother, I mean, <laughs> that right there. I mean, is I mean, the true you know, and it's just you know, I, I well, get it all the time. I, I, get, I think the other thing too, not to cut you off, he was like, uh, I don't understand anything about um, what takes what it takes to paint a fire helmet. If you asked me, if you said, hey, I need you to do this, I'd go down to Home Depot and look for high heat paint and spray it up. But like, there's a craft here. And that's like you're you're well within your right to be like, hey, no, I'm not gonna like give you this recipe away because that's yep. exactly yep. what it is. And yep. there's a lot of people that are. I think what really comes down to is it's like that Facebook safety battalion that gets activated when we do a video on a booster line. Yeah. And yeah. you know they they don't understand. <laughs> can't really go. You know. They can't really go. I'm just saying, Jeremy. I mean, you were gonna kill people. I, I agree. I mean, there's a lot that agree. goes into it, and I and just being in the shop and having you show us around, like now I'd say like. This is why I want to send my helmet here too, and it's no offense against the little guy that's out there doing. I the right started. Thing. I started that. Yeah, but you like, know, I, 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 I started out that way. Um, you, you see the craft here, you know, and uh, it, there's a lot that goes into it to do it the right way. It's a proprietary yeah. and, process, right? Over uh, years and yeah, years yeah. of trial and tribulation, you find the right process. We found. We found. We figured out the right process. It doesn't we mean figured that you're going to give away your trade secrets. No, and, and, and listen, I am very helpful sure. when it comes to you know when it comes to people that you know go about things in, in the proper manner instead of just emailing me and say ah you know what you're not a brother and yeah. I'm like for a while yeah, uh, just, anyways, just listen, anyways you take it from where anyways, it comes from right um, some guy throws that at you yeah you know, and, you know what from. there's there's a couple guys throughout the country that do this that aren't really in my market and I chat with them all the time and we talk oh this is what I do this is, you know and I give them pointers and you know, I learned things from them yeah, too. Of course. You know, but it's it's you, I have to protect my business. Without a doubt. You know. Yeah. Um, so that's number one because there's people that depend on it. Without a doubt. You know, but it's um, also different when you're in a trade. You can talk shop with somebody, and you found different ways of doing it, and it's a trade off. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Where you know. The other is either somebody's going to try to do it themselves, or they're going to try to start up a business. But Look, I'm then, not knocking anybody that starts in a basement because that's where I started. Of course, you know. Yeah, but bars. everybody's got to put their dues. I, that's right. I yeah, think correct. Funny, you said it to me the other day on the phone when we were discussing mm-hmm. something. Uh oh. There's those who are about themselves and those who are about about people and helping out people, and that's where that, somebody's going to throw out. You're not a brother. That's yeah, somebody who's yeah. out there for themselves. Sure, 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 sure. Not sure. helping people, and just by like you, like you hit on it before. That, you know, if you're not drawing a check out of this place and you're helping the people that are you know providing for them, like that's yep. Yep. You, you know you're not in it for yourself here. Yeah. So yeah. right there says it all. So yeah, and and not I mean this is so I mean I don't know if you wanted to hit on these. I mean you talked about uh, flat yeah. Black, so but just um, not to go into the process, but you get helmets that come in from all over the country that yeah. have yep. all different issues, right? It could be a, a simple repaint. You could you, if you look at. Uh, You know, if you look at this helmet here, you know, it's just coming in for, um, it comes in just like this. And, you know, it needs a color change because he got promoted to chief. Right. It needs a color change because, you know, sometimes lieutenants and captains wear red or, right. you know, yellow or, or something yeah, along those sure. lines. Um, and they want to keep the same helmet. They don't want to get a new helmet. Exactly. They want to keep it throughout their career. Yep. So once we start here, it moves to this phase. And then this one obviously is ton of repair work, heavy repair. This actually was repaired by somebody else. Um, we actually have to remove all of the old repairs and then put ours on it. So it, it kind of lengthens it in the process. But, you know, we strip it down and, and, and we're big on on uh, on uh, keeping the character of the helmet. Yep. Yeah. So like yeah. all these little cracks, you know, all this character of what the helmet's been through, we keep that. There's a, there's a seems to be a trend going on where they call it a smoothie and they sand away all the scroll work on the brim and they make it butter smooth. So if you're listening, don't don't ask us to do a smoothie. We won't do it. <laughs> no um, smoothies. So we, we, we keep it. 
you know, yeah. we, we keep that on the helmet. Yeah. Um, so once that goes, it goes through, we do all the repairs, we repair every little crack, anything that's through the helmet we repair. We have six different kinds of repair techniques sure. depending on the helmet. Sure. Um, and then it goes to a primer. And then this is where you get, this is your top coat. This is one, one top coat here. You okay. see, we, we sand in between each coat, you know, for the proper application of paint. Um, and then you look, then you get something like this, you know, our white where this is third, second or third coat, pretty much ready to go. We'll do one more top coat and then, uh, we'll let it bake for, uh, you know, a few hours. We have a heated drying booth. Um, we let it sit in there under the heat for eight hours or so to really seal the can paint. You, can you, Pete, can you hit on hour wise from the time it comes in the door? I mean, you have, you have a couple week turnaround time, I'm sure. Oh, you know, we're, but, we're at months. Okay. Um, the process so, itself, I mean, is it eight hours, 10 hours? You're probably talking, the, you're probably talking actual working time. Yeah. Probably 15 hours per helmet. Man hours. Uh, man right. hours, yeah, yeah, about man hours per helmet. Mm -hmm. That's what we have about budgeted for, you know, gotcha. finding our finding our costs is about 15 hours per helmet. A lot of it is paint drying time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the paint takes so long to cure, yeah. especially whites, reds, and yellows. They're a little more softer of a paint, so we have to let it dry longer. Um, the flat blacks we have, we have flat blacks. I mean, I could take this helmet, I could kick it across the floor, and it's rock solid. That's sexy, you know, way. this it's rock solid. Yeah, that's, um, that's gorgeous. I love that color. Yeah. Flat black is bulletproof. You yeah. know, and yeah. our flat black is more of what we, what we call like, uh, it's the no frills look. You know, we don't fix a lot of the stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't fix a lot of the imperfections. The flat shows it, right. and we just shoot it flat, right. and that's it. And it's just look. You want a helmet that's just, you don't want nothing fancy. You just oh, want it ready to go to work. Boom, that's flat black. That's yeah. it, done. Um, the semi-glosses and stuff, you know, it's more of keeping back with the tradition of Carnes and the semi-gloss and, and everything like that. So, sure. Um, and then, uh, and then yeah, and then we assemble it. And, and really, it's just paint drying time. Right. Um, our shop is built to handle 30, 35 helmets a month. And we currently have a rolling stock of about 85 helmets a month in wow. at one time in various states of something I would have never have thought right until we met until we talked we I got about never have yeah we, that we, this business is we got about 60 as it is. 60 I, 65 right now we're a little light in the shop right now which is good because we can catch, catch up, up on because the customers end up they, unfortunately they end up waiting because we're perfectionists but um i have guys that just i hey look man i'm at minimum eight weeks and they're like yeah it's okay i was just let me know it's done we just send it in and all right, okay you know so that's how we end up getting up to those numbers at one point we had 115. um can you do partial repairs and not like do a yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no 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 like the um we call this the mic plan this helmet <laughs> right here um mike's on a uh, very busy large metro fire department um and he's had this helmet since the day he got out of the fire academy and he comes in every six months and we just we just do little tiny repairs Little tiny repairs, touch up paint, and clean his liner. Um, you know, kind of like, yeah, I'm already starting to see stuff. I just, <laughs> I, I just picked it up last night. He's yeah. going on vacation. Um, so it, it's it's the mic plan. So we get him sent in where we just do, you know, spot repairs. Um, we do just helmets that do, you know, retro brass on a liner, borks. Um, you know, we rivet everything with tubular rivets. So it's not the Chicago screw. It's, you know, it's, it's true to form of what Carnes has been doing, right. you know, for hundreds of years um, with the rivets too, right? we do said, yeah Bronx bands Boston bands the squad flip Harrisburg flip you, whatever you, you want to call they're it selling now um, they're selling the Bronx bend as yeah. a yeah. Solid, yeah. right I saw yeah. that yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah you can have it done out of the factory yeah yeah yep so that's wild. um that's it that's always a I stay away from any type of Facebook conversations on how to bend helmets right. how to paint helmets how to do it I just Nobody don't get I don't get involved anymore and uh, that's always the number one. It's like I see it in like leather fire helmet market, and it's like going to bend my helmet. You know, um, what's what's the suggestion? And I'm like, oh, here we go. Yep. Yeah. This is going to be good. There's yep. going to be 30 different suggestions. Oh, everybody's you know, got and, their ideas. Yeah. And, it's, and listen, you know, you don't have to send it to us for a bend. You can do it at your house. You know, it's it's. I think, you know, we're a full service shop, and I think some people, you know, want to and should take the time and the pride to do some stuff to their own helmet you know but for those that can't or don't want to that's where we come in you know and and, and we take care of it i got so many things so. going through my head right now i have a fantastic <laughs> idea when we're, when we're done with this but anyway yeah oh, so cool 
I mean, really, so. really cool. And I think, you know, for me, being the traditionalist and, and the type of guy that likes to document culture and tradition in the fire service and why we're here is this is a craft and you're yep. a craftsman and you guys are artists. And like you said before, it might take longer because you notice an imperfection is you're not going to send your name back out. You're not going to send your product at, back out unless it's done right. And I think yeah, that's yeah. that's a feather in your cap for just doing the right thing. And, you know, this is a true trade and it's a true craft. I, I also you think know. that it's a tremendous, just the, the years of tradition and yeah. experiences and every helmet has a story. Oh, yeah. for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, you know, hey, listen, it's, it's, I'm just the guy that spent my life savings on the shop and just kind of figured out how to do it. I mean, the shop is, there's a lot of people involved in the shop, you know, yeah. it's, it's not just me. It's, sure. it's Mike, it's Colin, it's Josh, you know, it's, it's, you know, the shop wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. You know, it's, it's learning from Ashley. It's learning from, you know, I, I chat with the guy, uh, rekindled lids up in New Hampshire and, you know, he's doing some cool things too. And, you know, we chat back and forth and, uh, you know, I respect what he does. Um, and you know, there's just, there's more people involved, yeah. you know, it's not just me. You know, I, I think that's just the point I want to stress is it's, it's, it's not me. You know, I come into the shop and the guys are like, oh boy, the tornado's here. Cause I come in and I'm like, you know, stuff's everywhere. Yeah, right, and you know, right. the shop is very clean for you guys, you know, this um, is good. but, uh, great. you know, but the guys that are here, you know, they embody what, you know, I've built over the last, you know, eight years now. Well, I think longer than that, maybe t almost 10, um, they have the same attention to detail. They have the same, um, you know, perfectionist. Almost sometimes we argue because we're too perfectionists. Where it's like, oh, you gotta, nope, you got to get it out. You got to get it out. You got to do that over again. You know, Mike's like, no, 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 no. You know, we argue back and forth of, you know, that says who you we are, want it to be perfect. You know, such a loud message to be yeah. like, hey, we're not gonna. Like you, and we don't. You know, we yeah. don't. I've I've given away more stuff in this shop because I've wanted to keep a helmet because I don't like the way something came out and I've I I lose money on the helmet. I send a free t-shirt, I send a sticker pack, I send, you know, some I re refund shipping. I do something, but I'm like I, I just can't send it. I yeah. can't have this go out because right. it's it's our it's name. Your name. You know, it's our name and but I, I don't want the customer to have a subpar product. That's that's the thing. Is I don't want them to have a subpar product. I I could you're never gonna you're never gonna hit a home run on every customer service, you know, uh, aspect of everything, right, right. you know. And I certainly have some customers that probably aren't happy with me, but I still sent them a product I'm proud of, even if they're maybe they'll never use me again, maybe they're not happy with the way I conducted business or anything like that. But I still sent them a product I'm proud of. Let's talk about this unique piece that's in your shop. We saw it when we walked in, and I, I hear there's quite the story behind it. So, but. Not every helmet gets restored or refurbished. Um, and we do a lot of, we kind of found a little bit of a market with, you know, you know, period restorations and, you know, preservations and things like that. Um, so interesting, you know, we get, you know, you go to our website, you fill in your information, gives me, I get an email, boom. I saw an email, you know, last name, and it said just Eagle Repair. Okay, pretty standard, pretty easy, in and out. So. The helmet comes in and I take it out of the box and my Mike looks at me and my jaw is dropped and I'm looking at my like, Mike, look at this thing. And I'm looking at 267. I'm like, this is a New York, this is an old New York City helmet. Yeah. So I look at the work order. I'm like, Eagle replacement. Rebuild shield. You know, fix the wire. And I'm like, Yeah, we can't do this. <laughs> no, we, we can't we can't touch this. We, this is no. I was like, I, I gotta call a customer. I gotta, I gotta so I I get on the phone with the customer and you know I introduce myself, told him who I was. I got your helmet. Oh great, you know you think it can be repaired? And I'm like, do you know what you have yeah. here? Do you know what this is? And he goes, well, what are you talking about? I was like, did this helmet come from New York City? And he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, my uh, great grandfather was on the job in New York City, thirty nine to fifty nine, um, and that was the helmet he wore. And I was like, this is an unbelievable piece of history. I said, I can't touch this. I won't. I refuse to do any work to it. I refuse to touch it. I said, I don't even want to try and figure out how much this is worth on the open market and the collectibles market. I said, you don't want to repair this. You want to, we, we, we need to preserve this. So uh, we came up with a plan um, that we would build this, you know, wooden base, felt lined. Um, we're currently trying to get information about his father's career, great-grandfather's career, um, to put on a brass plaque 
in the cool. front here. Yeah, nice. And then we'll mount this, and then we'll do some type of, you know, clear acrylic or glass or mm -hmm. something type of uh, covering over the top, and then we'll send it back to the customer for display um, because he had no idea. I had about an hour conversation with this guy, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, the guy was literally in tears on the phone with me because he had no idea, you know, what he had. And once I was filling him in on, you know, the history and everything, and, you know, he was, you know, his, his family members contacted me. They're like, thank you so much, you know. It's awesome. I just, I, you know, I get scared if, you know, somebody else would have taken the opportunity to do it, to actually yeah. repair it. You know, it would have been, yeah. you know, it would have been terrible. And um, so, you know, this is an awesome piece of history. I mean, 39 to 59 in New York City. I mean, it's wild. It's insane. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's those are some crazy years. That's yeah. That's nuts. You know, and it, it's just cool to have it in the shop. You know, we have it in the shop. We look at it. And you look at it. And you just you look at it differently. You look yep. at it like, you know, the story behind it. If you could only ever figure out a quarter of what the story behind this helmet was, you know, it would be tremendous. That's what you we're know? talking about, right? All these helmets that come through, you guys. I mean, you're like the caretakers of history, if you will. I don't know if that's cliche or what, but I mean, it just to me it makes sense, right? Well, it, we you know we we try to be you know as far as period restorations go, and you know not touching history. Yeah. At the same point, we do get helmets. Um, that tin senator right there is a deputy chief's helmet from Philadelphia. That you know, as kids, all the cousins took a can of spray paint. And spray painted the whole over the whole thing, trying to fix it. Right. That's when we'll reform. That's when we'll restore it. Mm -hmm. You know, and we, you know, we'll we'll strip it down, we'll repaint it, we'll basically make it look exactly like it would have been, you know, when he when it was issued. I think so. that's one thing too, as I learned, is that you said it before, and I think it's a good message for anybody out there listening, is that if you have an older fire helmet from that's been passed down from a family member. Don't try to touch yeah it. Like, yeah yeah contact somebody like yourself yep, and be like hey yep. what's this this is my great grandfather's helmet yep. I'm thinking about taking some stripper to it like <laughs> stop well and doing, that's you know? like there's a there's a million ways to remove paint off of a helmet and nine hundred ninety nine thousand of them will destroy the leather and right. will just eat through it it'll sure. kill it'll kill the helmet you'll it's a process yeah and a lot of the chemical strippers actually prevent the paint from bonding to it so. You know, there's 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 a very very specific way to remove them. You know, remove the paint in a way that it's going to keep the leather intact, so so it's going to accept the new paint primer and, yeah. and all that other stuff. So, sure. Um, I love it. I love the stories. Um, you know, I mean that tin helmet too is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? I, I don't know anything. I've seen them, but do you know what era tin helmets? Those. Um. So I've done some work for Philadelphia before. And it was basically early 1900s up until oh. like I think Philly stopped issuing them in the 1950s. Oh really? Okay. Um, and the uh, the senators, Philly guys, used to use them. Um, all the eagles and everything would be smashed because they would just take their helmet off and they would clear windows with them. Yeah. You know, and it well, was that's like, what it was for. and it was like okay. all the yeah, sides. I, I mean, that's why all the sides them. in the helmet were it was bent in a certain way because they would just grab the helmet on the side and it would fold the metal up and then they would. It was like the side of the brim was just folded yeah. into the dome, and it was like like, like handles. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah they would just cool. they would grab the side of it, and they would. And it was you know, it's, I, first time I did them, I was like, "This is a weird way to have a helmet shaped," you know. And then yeah. I started talking to, uh, I started talking to the Philly Fire Museum, and they filled me in on this is you See, know that was this before is before we carried the golf balls as venting tools. Yeah, right? yeah. The hockey pucks, I heard. Hockey pucks. Well, yeah. yeah, hockey pucks. Broad Street bully. Thing. Yeah, yeah. They take, they take right. up a little more space. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, I just I, like stories like that. I just sit here and I just yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. What, what, I never knew that. I had no idea. With really? the exception of this one here, are there any helmets that have come through that stick out where you're like either? Well, I can tell you farthest away or just some <sighs> older. Like you were like, wow, I can't believe I have this here in the shop. I got to do this one. So, this is a twelve comb. So if you look at the difference between, you know, the, uh, that is awesome. so this helmet is, it's, it's, it's just something else. Um, so it, it got shipped in by a guy with that name. <laughs> Man, that name follows us everywhere. Huh? Put him in That's the studio great. once. So, That's beautiful. um, he shipped this in. I got a, I got a frantic phone call one day. I had pictures. Pete, I'm sending you pictures. You got to let me know if you can paint this thing white for me. And I said, 
I said, yeah, whatever. So I get this picture of a of a 12 comb and natural. Wow. So I'm like, yeah. I was like, that's easy. Naturals are easy to paint. You know, you, you get it shipped in here. I don't even want to tell you what he paid for it. Insane numbers. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't think he paid insane numbers, but I you could get insane numbers. I get it. Sure. For this. Sure. Um, I love it. Very, I very few of these around. Yeah. They command very serious money. 12 comb, 16 comb. You know, um, sixty-four combs command big, big money on the on the open market. Um, what years would that be then? Is that a Corn's helmet? Yes. Okay. There's a letter R, so like eighty-four. Okay. So, right. ah. um, interestingly enough, what comes on the helmet is these shields. Oh, the big ones. So oh, okay. this helmet was a retirement gift for a helmet maker out of Carnes. Really? So, and it came with a brass plaque that I have somewhere. Um, I think it's in one of our bins for safekeeping. Guy's first and last name, Tony Constantino, years of service, 52 to 87. He did 35 years. This was his retirement gift. Wow. Somehow ended up on eBay from the family. They just decided to eBay it. And so I told Bobby, I said, I'll do it for those shields alone. There was a third shield that they made. I actually gave to Capital City as a gift. I said, you know, here, you can take this one. Um, you know, those are the two that I want to keep. So, um, so uh, yeah, this is That's it. That's sweet, man. This yeah, is that's it. really, really cool. And those, Seb, I don't know, can you see those? Can we get that on the camera? Because I'll, I'll do, do a close whole up story on it. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty neat. So, that's and then beautiful. for you guys really cool. for coming today. Oh, look at that. So, oh, man. the echo. Oh, how cool, man. For you guys, and then me, Mike, and Colin signed it on the back. Thank you, Grace. So, Pete, awesome. thanks, brother. Yeah, that's thank you. awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank absolutely. you. Yeah, that's been great. So that is. For sure. This has been a, a fantastic time with you in the shop, and uh, Mike and Colin, who's off camera, they, they deserve. Uh, oh, you got to get them on camera. You yeah, gotta guys, get them come on out here. Come on, on you got to yep. come in here. I want to hear something. Josh, from you guys. still. Yeah, we're. No. Josh, get in here. We got to buy Yeah, come on in. We'll pack the shop full of guys right now. So. You guys are all, um, Mike, you're retired from the city of New Haven? Yes. And Colin, you are on the job right now. You're on a uh, squad oh, one? Yes. Nice. Yep. And then this big guy over here who knows Rob. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. guys have a, a, a past together. But, Josh um, Miller. Yeah. One and only. <laughs> one, one and only, yeah. huh? Nice. I fix but, gumball machines. <laughs> nice. uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But I think, the, I think the important message here, I mean, this shop is incredible. And Pete, you, you've built you. something here that has... Uh, you know, a place in its in, in history here because you're maintaining a lot of history and culture and tradition. And uh, as just a regular brother, man, I thank you for doing that because you guys really are bringing forth something that's incredible here. And for you guys to be on board and to every day put your blood, sweat, and tears into this place too, man. man it's uh, a lot of fun. It's fun, yeah. A lot of fun. I bet. I yeah. bet. The, the, the attitude here, when, from the minute we walked in today, you guys, you could tell you're all good friends. And it's like the camaraderie, just like that. The firehouse right. is also here, and for just you continues. not being on the line anymore, I'm sure it's nice to. That's it. Yeah, it's like have some place to go. It's like, <laughs> it's, like having, it's like having coffee in the firehouse sometimes. Sometimes yeah. you don't get any work yeah. done. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. But I think it's great, and uh, we can't thank you guys enough for uh, yeah. inviting us in today and capturing your story. Yeah. And hopefully, we'll get it out there. And uh, you know, and it, this needs to be passed along. That you know, shops like this exist, and uh, and for you guys to be here, ragtop, and wow, to do this. Without a doubt, you know, Mike, Josh, Colin, you know, without a doubt, without them, the shop wouldn't run. I mean, honestly, these are the guys that are doing the work. I'm usually sitting behind the desk, making sure they have parts, making sure they have, you know, the right information for the helmets. You know, it's just, you know, these these guys are really, without them, there's there's no way, you know, the shop would continue to run. Awesome. Um, you know, so, and, and, and you know, they they've dealt with the expansion. They've dealt with the ups and downs with the, uh, the uh, reorganization. Uh, I like to organize. Like Alex, uh, <laughs> I like to the reorganization. I like to, I like to organize things. Yeah. Organize Big things organizer. Once every a couple weeks. weeks. A couple yeah. weeks. I'm the yeah. same way, man. Yeah, I got like to, I, I got to, I got to reorganize things to find out where I'm at. You know, yeah. um, you know, Josh is starting our clothing line. Um, hopefully, nice. going to be out soon. Yeah, um, working on some designs and things like that. So everybody really kind of has their. Yeah talent of what they these bring to two the are shop. the guys that run the shop this guy and this guy right here these yeah. are the guys that yeah i'm just i just help little things here and there these are the guys <laughs> you know and i always say that to mike too like it's like 
it's like coming in here. You, it's like being at the firehouse, you know. Yep. It's like it's the same thing. Come in here, and we get, you know, we get guys that come in. We get guys come in for a cup of coffee. The Woodbridge Fire Marshal that were are actually uh, in the yeah. town of Woodbridge. He's a retired New Haven guy. He was a New Haven yeah. Fire Marshal and yeah. uh, left New Haven and came over here to Woodbridge. He stops in for coffee. You know, I mean, we don't really advertise where the shop is because right. then we would never get anything done. Yeah, but you know, yeah. it's uh, you know, Michael have some friends from the job come visit him. You know, Josh comes up, hangs out. You know. Well, it was an idea at one time, right? If we were gonna have like yeah, uh, yeah, we wanted here, the shop yeah. up here with the clothing and stuff, so people could come up, see yeah. the shop, buy some clothes. But uh, then we figured it, out it <laughs> didn't allow us to get anything done. BS yeah. all day with them, you know. So because we all like to talk, yeah. I mean, that's it's about the job. Yeah, my so. wife says I don't shut up, so. Yeah. Uh, start charging to hang out with us, you know. Yeah, right, 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 right. Start charging. Why not? That's why we started this whole National Fire Radio. That's it. We get to go do this shit, you know. Yeah, it's fun. But, uh, but anyway, well, listen, I thank you very much for having us here today. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for the photo. I mean, that's cool. It's going to go right on the wall of the new studio. We're doing a whole new nice. studio backdrop and so cool. on. So it's uh, we're, we're coming a long way, too, just like Listen. you guys. Kudos so, to you guys for yeah, right. making thank the you. trip up. That uh, It's not a short drive. No. And, uh, it's, no, you know, I mean, no, it's not even an issue. You know, like, what uh, you guys are doing for the fire service is you know, fantastic. So cool, man. Thanks. keep it How up. How does it take you to get here? Yeah. Thank you. Not very long. No? no. It was uh, yeah, like an hour and a half. I, we picked them up on the way, so yeah. not a big deal. But uh, no, New Haven's not that bad. Hour and a half, yeah. two hour stops yeah. from where we all are. That's not bad. So, no, not bad at all. That's it's just bad. that traffic that, you know, either 95 traffic yeah, or yeah. we took 84 no. actually. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah, it cut, cut up and cut down. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's so, kind of the smart but, way to uh, But it worked out well and no problems. And we're so happy to be here. And I thank you for opening your doors yeah, to us man. and, you know, showing us what you guys do. I was, I was shocked. I was like, Bobby was like, oh, they want to meet you. I was like, yeah. Hell yeah. For what? We just fixed fire. You know, I, I don't know. Who would want to meet you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the thing, though. He, he said it you know, like, at the end of every podcast. We tell people, like, thank you for allowing, uh, trusting us to, right. to share the story. And I, it's kind of like the same thing. Like, you're, People are trusting you with their helmets, and there's so much that rides in that helmet, right. uh, figuratively you know, and literally. So it's it's kind of like a, I want to say, match made in heaven, but it's really is oh, something. Yeah. So. Without a doubt. You know what? It keeps us. It keeps us busy. You know. Listen, me and Mike are the same way. Sometimes we come in here, we 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 like metal. We just blast metal. Absolutely. We work. We vent. You know. We just we get to just watch work. War films. Watch war films. You know. <laughs> we just you're having a bad day. You just come up to the shop. You work. Yeah. You know. I've spent some nights here before. You know. Left. Left. You know. Took off around. Not with a kid anymore. But you know. Before that. Um, you know. Uh, 24-7. Yeah, 24. We'd be here sometimes 5, 6, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night, just metal blasting and, you know. And, it's, you know, I, I hope it, you know, like I, always, I always joke around at, you know, when Mike decides to hang up his riveters the day that the shop closes. But, you know, I think. Well, and that's, and that's it's our succession plan, you right? know, because, you know. It might be a rough plan. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ridley, you might have to come and you know, I, I think, at, you know, I didn't take, you know, I haven't taken a paycheck in a long, long time. You know, I keep reinvesting it. And, you know, I think the big question, why do I do it is because I want it for my son. Yeah. You know, I got a five month old son. He's absolutely changed my life. And, you know, I want him to be able to come in, in the summers and oh, I'm going to go work with dad and, you know, Uncle Mike and Uncle Colin, and Uncle Josh like at the shop and exist. Same thing. Yeah. That's, that's what I want for him. You know, if, you know, and he may not be into it, but hopefully he is. And hopefully we get to share the same experiences because I know. It taught a lot to me about work work ethic. You know, yeah. my father worked three jobs at one you know at one time growing up, just to put food on a table. Yep. You know, and that was the time that I saw him. And it, you know, I just want my son to have the same values that my father instilled in me. And and that's really for me what it's about. It's not about the paycheck. It's not about the money. It's about me being able to bring my son here and spend time with him. And yep. you know, um, you know, just before I hate being on camera. And uh, my wife was like, you know what? She's like, you worked hard, you know, you deserve it. Go ahead. And, you know, she's a saint. And she has dealt with, uh, I got to take another loan. Yeah. Can, can you guess. sign here? Because I, I got to float the shop for the next three months, you know. Okay. It's, uh, you know, and she's dealt with a lot. I mean, you know, she's really, and she's always supported me. So she deserves a ton of credit. Yeah. Um, she deserves a ton of credit because she's, as bad as it's gotten, and Mike will tell you, you know, the last three years have been rough at some points, and some points we hit some really low spots where I didn't know if the shop was going to make it. Right, and I think it's just a, right, it's just you a know, hobby. Yeah, yeah, you know. and, and uh, you know, we hit those ups and downs of the expansion, and my wife stuck by me 100%. Mike stuck by me, you know, Colin, Josh, you know, these guys are, 
you know, no matter, Josh is usually on the receiving end of my venting phone calls when I'm frustrated. And uh, no, he'd call me the next day and be like, I got five helmets coming in. You know, and it's like, you know, you can't, you can't. The shop is bigger than me, is what yep. I'm going to say. Yep. So, You're right. You know, it's not You're just right. me. It's a team, so, so like you said, I mean, you're sharing, the, sharing it with and everyone. It, and there's too many guys to name, honestly. Right. There's, there's too many guys to name that have brought us work. Um, you know, the guys on my crew are fantastic. Eric Riggett, right at the back of the squad with him. He's a, he's fantastic. He's constantly bringing me work. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough to work with those guys. And uh, it's just Anthony. Um, you'll meet Anthony. He's working squad two today. Right. One of my best friends went to the academy together. It's just, you know, Gabe and Jemmy, Bobby Ecker, you know. Um, there's just, there's so many people to name. You know, there's Gordo Pippen from Chester, Kyle Burton from Harrisburg. Uh, Scott Tinloy from San, uh, Oakland. Um, we're starting to get a ton of San Francisco work now. That's great. Um, there's just, there's honestly, there's just people over the country that, you know, for whatever reason, they just dug what we were into and just, you know, they well, supported th us from day one. I think, I think part of it, because I'm seeing it with what we're doing. Right. And I think a lot of it has to do with this incredible business that we're all involved with in yep. the fire service. Yep. And that the stand up brothers and the guys that get it, get it. And they, they surround themselves with stand up guys. And so it's funny, you know, we were talking to Bobby Eckert and how we got hooked up with you, yep, yep. with Bobby, and he said, hey, yep. a good friend of mine does this. And what, what's funny is as the stories keep going and as we meet more people, you know, the people we're bringing into our studios or coming out into the field and doing this type of thing with them, it's because they're squared away. It's because yeah, they yeah. get it. They understand it's bigger than them and that we're just all part of this crazy machine. But at the end of the day, you got to do the right thing. And so every circle we find ourselves getting in the middle of, it's like, hey, this guy knows this guy, and this guy knows this guy. Because so if he vouches for him, he's vouching for him, and so and that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's yeah. all about yep. surrounding yourself with the right people. Right. Yep. And with in this business, passion. yeah, the same yeah. passion. I mean, yeah. we're both, you know, we're all artistic. We like to take stuff and right. take it from that to this. Right. And it's like, you know, it's just it's it's an addiction. It's awesome. Yeah. And the same thing with you guys. It seems like this is an addiction with your. It's it's just a passion, you yeah. know, and we all have that. No, we well, just want to go out and meet. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fireman? Yeah, just wanted to meet you, yeah. so we'll, yeah. we'll put you on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, no, uh, and it's definitely a place you could do that other than a helmet shop. Right? <laughs> 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 that's, that's not so bad. It's not so bad. No, this was this was incredible. And uh, I thank you guys for yeah. opening up your doors. Listen, thank, thank you. Having us in. And uh, sure. we're going to do a lot more with you today and hang out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We've got a bunch of things to do. So. Yeah, you got to have the New Haven Pizza experience. Definitely. Yeah. We'll do that. No, so I mean, shut their shop down yeah, the whole day. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, these guys are staying away. No, no these guys are staying away. 1244, I won't 1244, you out. Everybody, it's Rob from National Fire Radio with Jeremy, Tucker, Pete, and the crew. Thanks for checking in. We'll catch you guys later. Rag Cop Industries. Take care, guys. Have a good one.